So. Hey, good morning, everyone. Uh, thanks for joining us. This is week 24 of the Homes and Money Realtor Mastermind. And, um, you know, I, I want to give full disclosure that uh, as I've gone through this now 24 weeks, there's there's things that happen, guests that, that uh, are here where something sparks an idea of mine. And so a lot of you have been here in week seven. We had Danny Barron with the Barron Group. And um, today I have Mitch Kinney and uh, Mitch, welcome. Thank you for joining us. We're losing your audio a little bit. All right, hold on. Let's let's get his audio back. He was on for a second. Here we go. How about now? Uh, all right, cool. All right, so Mitch, welcome. Thank you for for joining us today. Yeah, sorry about that. Excited all good. So I, I want to tee this up. Um, and I, and I went back and listened this morning to exactly what was said, Mitch. I don't know if you've seen it or not. I actually cut it up into a short video. Um, but when you approach Danny. By the way, Mitch is the director of operations for the Baron Group. And yep. Mitch, when you approached Danny, what Danny told me, his recollection was that you specifically said, I see that you did 1.3 million in sales last year. Yep. What are you going to do to get to 2.5? And you that mm -hmm. was like the first question you hit him with, according yep. to Danny. So yep, that's right. I guess my first question for you was did had you been in real estate before that? I had never purchased a house. Um, I had I didn't even know that I needed to get a loan for a house. I thought you had to have cash to buy a house. Um, so I, I knew nothing, um, but I had just come out of an experience of going to Joshua Tree and we stayed at this incredible Airbnb where the experience was off the chain um, just in terms of the minute detail. And so like I got curious about real estate but all of my experience prior to that was an owner owning and operating experiential businesses. Um, so we own a company called Breakout Games. Um, it's an escape room concept where you get locked in a room and you've got 60 minutes to try to solve riddles, puzzles, and clues to get out. Um, we've got various themes. So I had been a part of that. And we partnered with some awesome folks down in Lexington um, who had owned all of the orange leaves in Kentucky prior to starting this concept. So we got to learn from them and I got to see firsthand what it looks like to take this idea and scale it. Um, and so we, we opened our first store and we got to scale personally to three stores, but then they also got bought out by a private equity company um, and got to help them scale from 15 to 45 stores. So as we were going through the experience personally, and I think Danny may have even shared this on that past podcast, of what is it, uh, how do we feel in terms of the home buying process? He met us with just complete love and care and something that I was not expecting um, as a consumer wanting to purchase real estate from my agents. I thought they were gonna schmooze me to try to get me to go forward with the sale and we were met with the complete opposite. And that was the first time where I was like, this is exactly what we are trying to do with these experience businesses and creating an immersive experience where people are lose, putting their phones down, they are connecting with one another, and what we we call is um, getting relational depth and going further beyond um, just the casual bar conversation of what did you do this week, what's going on in the game, like you're experiencing something and in it together, and I felt what I was trying to create from Danny in our real estate pursuits, um, and was like, I believe in you. I don't really care about homes all that much, but I believe in who you are as a person and what you stand for. Um, and I see an opportunity here to help you scale what you're doing. And I'd love to partner with you in that. Nice. So you took uh, your experience from the breakout rooms and, and the rapid growth that you had there mm -hmm. and, and then basically wanted to, uh, I guess, copycat cookie cutter that 
into what Danny at the time, and, and I don't know if he said, I think he said you were his first hire, maybe, maybe yeah. second hire. Yeah. Um, and, and, and then basically have built that now into this impressive, uh, super impressive organization. Um, was it specifically the experience that people went through that kind of was what you wanted to recreate? Yeah, I mean, uh, I'm not going to lie. I wanted to make a lot of money and I saw how much money he was making. So I was like, I want a piece of that pie. Um, but for me, I think what I found in past jobs of having my first gig be a recruiting job where I'm trying to pay, play C-suite level executives at the age of 21, I have no idea how to connect to these people. And I feel like I'm just making 50 to 100 phone calls a day and just doing what I'm told. And I didn't find any purpose in that work. And whenever it came to starting breakout, it was the first thing where it unlocked in me. Um, I, I think I have found what I am created to do um, in terms of making these experiences and helping people find this connection with one another. Um, and then when it came to meeting Danny and I'm feeling that on the receiving end, I was like, yes, we can take this, what I know very well and what I've learned about myself, even in that past job, it was like, as I'm becoming this entrepreneur and that's what people are saying whenever I'm out networking or people are praising me because they've seen the success of breakout. I think I had to, I had a come to Jesus moment of, I am not necessarily an entrepreneur and the sense of I'm the guy that has the ideas, I'm gonna create this massive vision for what we're gonna do. I feel like I finally came to the realization of what I'm great at is I'm good at helping those people executing. And I use the example, I, I promise I'm not like a Lord of the Rings nerd, um, but like I identify with the Samwise Gamgee character who is there to help Frodo along the journey to get the ring to Mordor. And so, I feel like once I finally accepted that of my identity is not this hard charging person, I want all the credit. I saw what Danny was doing as like, I can buy into this and I can actually use what I'm good at and what I feel comfortable doing um, and being a massive role um, and participant on your team and helping you scale this thing to success. Yeah. And I, one of the things he specifically referenced in that, in that um, episode that we had was that one of the things you said was, I don't care if my name's anywhere, right? Yeah. Yeah. But what's happened is you, he features you a lot. I was at yeah, the comedy does. night and he talks about you, you know, at length and yeah. the Reds game and other stuff. And so, um, you know, you are obviously a significant piece of that team. So um, I want to go down this rabbit hole for a second because because you mentioned this. How do you take a... I, I, sorry, I want to get into the operation side too, but sure. but I want to talk about the client experience here for a second. How do you take a one hour escape room experience, mm -hmm. okay, and parallel that to the home buying or selling experience? How yeah. how have you been able to do that? And obviously, everyone's here to learn. Nobody's no. I think you come with the right mindset that you you're here to help other people. So yeah. how have you kind of helped the Baron Group do that? Well, I, I feel like it, there's the escape game business, but it's also, I worked at Graders and scooped ice cream in high school. And then I worked at Keystone as a server in college. So I, I mean, as I've thought about this, I feel like I've gone through a million transactions. If I'm looking at every single ice cream that I scooped in person that I helped to every beer or mac and cheese I delivered um, at Keystone to then getting into doing escape rooms of, I think there is just something that whenever it comes to how do you create the systems to then allow for magic to happen, I have learned that over from starting to scoop ice cream through getting real feedback of this is not how, this is not my experience. And so what do we do in those situations? So I think it's everything from how do we create this to be perfect, but also it's I feel like some of our best five-star reviews from Breakout have been from the experiences that didn't go well, but we figured out 
well, we're going to refund you this and we're going to give you a free room to come try it again. And then when they're coming back, we're meeting them with champagne as the last thing that they open that pairs with the final clue type of deal. So I think it, it takes a lot of steps and how are we tracking this? So I think as it pertains to the things that we're doing on our team to create that experience, it is everything is tracked. Everything is detail oriented. There's a template for everything. Um, and I'm a pretty big proponent on language in terms of like, how is somebody actually going to receive this and how are they going to feel? Because I, I think people don't necessarily remember what you say as much as they remember how you made them feel. So we go to an intense detail in terms of every single one of our templated emails that we're sending. What is that person going to feel when they receive that? And is it completely clear? Um, and if not, we need to change this up. And that's, I feel like that stuff is always being tinkered because we're being met with some new iteration on the real. We lost your audio there for a second. Right here. Very, very soft. Yeah, yeah it's just uh, there's an echo. It's like obviously, like there's a big room. Feel like it was just getting good <laughs> like mitch was just saying the secret sauce there Mitch, if it helps you at all, what happened was the audio went away. Oh, he's going to, he's going to rejoin. So, Hey, while he's doing that, if anybody has a specific question that you want me to ask him, feel free to put it in the chat. And obviously we're going down a rabbit hole of experience here, but, um, all right, here we go. My bad. Yep. yep. All right. Sorry about that. All good. So I think if I can take you back a little bit before we lost your audio, you were talking about um, when an experience doesn't go right, you you can you can greet them with champagne when they've when they've completed the escape room, and then we lost you shortly after that. Yep. So I mean, I I think it comes back to in the same way of as we're dealing with the transactions that we we have on our team, everything that is from how we template our emails and what those things say um we're just very careful with the words that we put in there because it's about how are we going to make them feel not necessarily what we say and so what are those words saying to make them feel a certain way um and are they clear about everything to where we want to make sure that the inspections email is tailored to where if they're getting an as-is inspection versus if they are getting a full inspection and what does that language say to where they are knowing ahead of time of going into this, there's probably going to be stuff that's wrong. Therefore, instead of us talking about it after the fact, you've already been prepped and it's not a shock to you. So I think it's trying to go into that uh, minute detail to where they are very clear with everything that's gonna be happening and we're helping just walk them along that experience. And I think also tailored to that, we charge our operations team to be very aggressive of like, for them, it's a challenge and it's a goal to make sure they get their transaction timeline out to the other agent and the other transaction coordinator prior to them receiving one. So I think it's one thing for us to focus on that from just 
how do we do this for our clients? But I think it's also doing the same thing to our lender partners, to our title partners, and to the co-op agents that we're working with and their teams of, we want to be great across the board because we want to be loved by everybody that we're working with. And we want them to feel that we love them as well. So what are we doing and what systems are we creating um, to do that so that we are having that class act experience? Because I think our clients feel the ease of transaction whenever that is happening across the board. Um, and I think we all know that this is typically one of the top five most traumatic things people deal with in their lives. So what are we doing to say, this doesn't have to be traumatic. This can actually be an awesome win for you and your family. And we want you to start feeling that from the moment you reach out to us directly beyond the transaction. And I think Danny talked a lot about the client events in that past podcast. But for me, that's like an accountability of we are going to do these four massive events every year and we want to see you at all of these things. Therefore, the transaction has to go well. Otherwise, it's going to be awkward when we're talking about your flooding basement at the Reds baseball game. <laughs> um, so I, th I think it, it for us, we just take every single step of the deal very seriously to make sure that our people are feeling well loved and well taken care of throughout the entire process. So. Um, I've thought of three things here while you were, while you were unpacking that for us. One is, is the language and the words that you say, was that something that you came in with, or is that something that you have learned since you've been with, with Danny and, and then implemented? I would say, um, Danny is just a star in terms of how he makes people feel. And so I would say, as much as I want to try to take credit for some of the genius behind those, it has been collaborative, but I think a lot of it is very much Danny's soul uh, and how he talks to people and then templating that into how are we going to do that across the board. Um, and I think as we bring new agents onto our team, it is also kind of prepping them on this is the language that we use and this is what we've seen success with even though it may be completely different. Prior to me getting into real estate, I never sent an emoji in my life. And now in just about every text I send, it has some sort of emoji because of the way Danny made me feel whenever we were going through our deal. And when we lost out on a house, putting the crying emoji, I felt like he was actually in that with me versus just sending me a text with a period at the end of you didn't get it. Sure. Um, so I think for me, it's I have kind of just been... Uh, understudy of these are the great people, whether it's Danny or whether it's a marketing brand or a running shoe brand that I love. And I love how they communicate to me as a consumer. How can I take some of those things even beyond just real estate, but what does it, what speaks to me? And then how can we template that into, if I feel good, whenever I receive these types of messages, I would imagine the people that we're working with would feel good as well. Okay. The second, the second thing that you kind of said was um as you've grown and and i believe again i've been to uh an event recently the the com uh, comedy night nice, yeah um the culture that you guys have as uh, a team a company whatever we're supposed to call it with with the baron group mm -hmm. the culture is amazing and so i have to believe that that you when you attract new agents and you mentioned this just a minute ago, this is the language that we're going to use. And this is what's been, what's been very successful. I, I think that maybe sometimes that could be met with some resistance because agents um, and, and just my 20 plus years of experience, they're all different, right? And they all operate differently. H how has that been for you as the person that quote unquote helps enforce that within the, the company? Yeah, and I, I would say that's honestly where I spend most of my time now. Um, a lot of the operational tasks and the management of the transactions has actually been passed on uh, to Sam on our team, who's operating as our operations manager. So because he has been so excellent at what he's doing, he's got great people that are under him working on the listing and buy side. I would say as a part of my, my role, I'm actually working with the agents more. Um, and I, I think for me, I, I am very passionate about, and this is what I've grown to love about our industry. I think this is a very fun job. It's also a very demanding job in that 
you've got to set boundaries and keep them, stay accountable to them to where if you're telling somebody, hey, I'm going to the FC game, I'm not going to be able to get to this text between six and eight tonight. And then they text you and you respond to them. You've broken your own boundary. So I think it comes around to what are the boundaries that we're setting and how are we actually executing a great work-life balance in an industry where it is easy to let work consume you, especially when it's like, I can either write this offer and get this under contract tonight and make 10,000 bucks, or I could have $0. Um, or you could even write the contract and still come away with $0. Um, so a lot of what we are doing is we're very much after our agent's best interest where yes, we set goals for everybody on our team. Um, and we work really hard to try to achieve those goals, but We've had hospital visits, whether that's for baby or for emergencies with people on our team. We've had travel. We've had lack of babysitting care where mom went out to Canada for a few months and I know now I now have to be with my kid. And so I feel like for us, it's like we care less about you actually hitting your goal and more about who you are as a human and that you're developing and this is something that you really enjoy. Um, if that is working, I believe people then, the people that you're working with are going to get the best version of you and are going to have that seamless transaction. Um, and if, if we feel like we're just driving our people into the ground and if you're not making this many calls or if you haven't set this many appointments, I think for me, um, I, I've read the, I read this book that completely changed my mindset on work called Thou Shall Prosper by Rabbi Daniel Lappin. And whether you're an employee or a business owner, a realtor, self-employed, every single day you have the opportunity to wake up and decide how you are going to operate that day. You are completely in control of your own work and what you're going to produce. And I think that's the same thing for all of our agents and what we kind of pound into them of like, if you want to go make a hundred, two hundred thousand dollars, you absolutely can do that. If you want this to be a fifty thousand dollar thing that you do part time, great. We're here to support you in both of those, and you can leverage our systems to make this be whatever you want it to be. And we're here as resources and advocates and advisors to help you do that. Um, versus, hey, we're bringing you on because we need you to develop twenty million dollars of business for us, or else you're gone. That just hasn't been the way that we've ever operated. And I've seen teams that do that and they are successful. But for me, I think that contradicts what we're about in creating this brand of people want to go help each other out and show for you on a Saturday when you're having a baby shower or whatever um, to where it, it's fully a team effort. And I think the people that we're bringing on, we have never gone out and sought to hire anybody. So far, everybody has been attracted to us. I mean, even going back to me and Danny, like Danny didn't reach out to me asking me if I'd want to join his team. I very much pitched him on that. And that has kind of just been something that has con continued to trickle down. Uh, it's probably an anomaly. I would say that that's not the natural uh, way of how people are operating their teams. But um, I think it's just been by, I think it's one thing to say, I'm praying for you or I'm thinking for you. I do that all the time and then I never actually do it. And I think we're very intentional around being, hey, we are saying that we're going to do this and we're going to put action behind it as well. Um, and it is actually what we're what we're about and we feel very convicted by it. That's awesome. So when when I reached out to you and we connected on asking you to be a, a guest, um, you mentioned that th that particular day that you were exhausted because you had gone through all all of the agents calls and updates. And, and what you just said was that you've got people that have aspirations of making a lot of money in this. And then you've got people that have aspirations of maybe doing this part-time and, and just supplementing their income. Mm -hmm. How is that for you? Because I feel like you, you serve in a lot of ways as a team lead, you know, mm -hmm. the director of operations can also wear that hat because, yeah. you know, Danny sells and then he thinks up like crazy events. Right. Yep. <laughs> but so how is that for you to differentiate when you're going through each of the agents? Because we've got team leaders on this call, we've got solo agents, but I feel like that could be beneficial uh, as well. So like in terms of the calls, I typically try 
I feel like this has also evolved. It used to be, I came with an agenda of, I want to hit these things. And I, I think as we've continued to bring more people on our team, I think we've got 11 licensed agents on our team now. It's, it was very different from whenever it was our first two agents to what it is now, because everybody's also at a different stage. Johnny and Courtney, they were the first people we brought on. I don't need to spend that time training them on, hey, this is what this portion of the contract means. And this is the deal that you're going through. We're getting to talk about, hey, how many appointments are you setting? What are those conversations looking like? How are you finding success? And I'm I'm leveraging them as like, you're my hands and feet that are out in the doing the showings, setting the listing appointments, and um, I'm gathering information that from them as much as I am also that person that's there to have them vent to, to where they do get that pressure release valve that we don't want them to do that with our clients. But I want to be that space to where, yeah, it does feel like counseling a little bit. But then on the other end, whenever we are bringing on our newer agents who Josh, who just joined our team, we are still getting into the nitty gritty of, hey, this is the best way to structure a deal. This is you understanding the contract so well to where whenever you are trying to be creative of how can we make this even um, more special in the eyes of a seller or a listing agent, we get a scheme around that. So I I think for me, it's very much looking at each individual person um, going into it every week. And I want to have something where if they want to come to an, with an agenda, we will always open the floor to, hey, if there's something that you've got to talk about or want to talk about right now, let's do that. Um, and I set every appointment to be 30, 30 minutes, but uh, there's always a the gap of an extra 30 minutes there if it needs to go longer, if they want to take more time. Um, so they at least have that one thing, of, and we do it every Monday, and sometimes it bleeds into Tuesday based on scheduling conflicts. Um, to where we're fresh off the weekend. Usually we're still in that multiple offer situation where maybe it's going to be accepted here in the next couple hours. So we get to talk about that. Um, and it's, it, for me, it's a way to help also then talk about what's happened in the past, but also what are you going to be doing this week? And more than anything, it's not necessarily me setting, hey, you got to go do these things. It's, hey, you said you wanted to do this and this was the game plan we came up with. Are you still executing on that? Or do you need some ideas around um, how you could still be doing this flower picking event type deal Yeah, uh, and help and help around that? So um, I do that for a couple other businesses outside of real estate as well to where like the advising role is something that I feel like I've kind of fallen in love with. And I do like being a realtor but I like working with our team. Um, and I feel like my skills are more suited for that than the Danny who's bubbly and out and about talking with a ton of other people. I'm way more on the introverted side uh, than he is. That's great. So one of the things that I love, and we, we've talked about this a little bit, that, that your events are spectacular. You, you blow them out, like, right? And you've, you've gotten to the point where it's, it's for a year, partially because Danny said he, he sets a very lofty budget for it. Yep. But um, one of the things that I loved and, and the people that are on this um, mastermind listening today, we've all talked about this. They're, they're all previous guests. And we've, we've talked about the art of the follow-up, so to speak. Mm-hmm. Right. And, and one of the things that Danny said, and I think he, he mentioned that this was an old Keller Williams tactic, right. Was that creating an event, and the invitations that go behind it and and the follow-ups reminders to come etc they satisfy a lot of touch points yeah and so i i think that what you guys have done really well is that your events encompass all of your team like you said there's 11 other agents that are licensed under the baron group mm-hmm. they all get to experience that event so it's not just like it's danny's event right mm-hmm. and so um how have you been able to help sell that concept? And, and I feel like we need to understand more of the, the messaging, the wording, the follow-up that goes around that, because that can satisfy so many touch points in a client database, right? So I, I think for the agents, um, I think there, there's always this employee mindset and there's this owner mindset. 
there are some agents on our team that have that owner in mindset and they're like, Hey, I want to go crush it. I want to go do my own thing. And I'm hard driving. That's not everybody. Um, and I think it's, there's not one right way or a wrong way. Some people have that employee mindset where for them to not have to think about planning their own thing and they get to leverage that four times a year is massive. And they still get to sit in that owner mindset of, or that owner position of, Hey, I'm going to be an agent and I'm going to go hunt and kill business, but somebody else is going to handle these events for me. And they are excellent at what they do. Um, and I think that's kind of where we've built this to be like people have their own lanes on our team and they get to focus on what they do well. And then everybody else on the team gets to benefit from what the other people are owning. Um, and so for me, whenever I look at events, to me, it's just a small business that we're running, whether it's a grand opening for a breakout or we're doing a pop up at Beer Fest or whatever. I, I feel like those are the types of thing where it's like we spreadsheet it. We figure out who's going to be responsible for everybody, for everything. Um, we think through the experience. We walk through the experience twice. Uh, we try to tap as many volunteers as we possibly can. Um, so that the agents then have their time of, I didn't have to spend any time doing this. I got to spend all my time going out and continuing to show houses and set listing appointments and do things that are going to bring money back to my family and back to our team while everybody else is getting to focus on these things that they love to do. Um, it's, I think it's just been a, a win for everybody that for me, if I'm having to go show houses and I, I, I think this is why Danny's wanted to create the team the way he has is it's a lot to go show houses and then also do this event and then also set more appointments and then also be grabbing random coffees with people that just want to network within the industry. Um, when other people are taking responsibility of what they love to do, it gives people the ability to focus on those top five things that are on their to-do list and execute those really well. Yeah. And, and I think one of the things that I remember, it, maybe it didn't, maybe it wasn't this way, but it appeared that way to me was that at the event, you freed up your, your team to be able to mingle. And I yeah. think Scott Ferguson talked about that. Um, uh, he talked about that a lot when we had him on that when they have a, a Kona ice truck or when they do stuff like that in their, in their neighborhood with their geo farming strategy, that he realized one of the biggest things that he should be doing is walking up and down the line, just chatting with people. Right. 100%. And, and so I think you guys have done a really good job. I don't know if it's because you got a lot of other volunteers that, that helped out. I know some of your, your partners, be, be it title or, or lender and then past yeah. clients helped out, but you, you freed yourselves up so that you could actually be out there and talking and really make it an appreciation event. Yeah. And I, I would personally, I feel like because I, uh, I geek out about every single detail, that comedy night was the first one where I felt like I left and I was like, everything went right. I truly have no poor feedback around this, but it's also taken us two years of event after event of having things of we want, we would do this wrong. We had a golf outing last year and there was a major backup. Well, why did that backup happen? Um, and then how does that also apply to these different events that we're doing? Um, so I, I think a lot of it is just, Hey, we're going to try this. And usually year one, there's a lot of things that we're going to need to figure out. Uh, but it's going to set us up for success for the future events that we're going to do as well. Uh, but yes, the goal is always for everyone on our team to potentially have the opportunity to be able to mingle and touch base. And I think it, that one was the first one where even our operations team was able to kind of um, move around and touch base. And I think that's also good because a lot of our clients, they get under contract on a house and they're talking to our operations team more than they're talking to our agents. And it's awesome for them to be able to put faces to names. And it is more than just Danny or just the agent that you work with. You got to work with a powerhouse team um, that took you all the way to the finish line. That's great. So after the, the events and, and because you said you, you kind of teed me up, up to this, that you're the, the back end systems numbers guys, how, 
how much business and, and maybe you haven't captured this this data but how much business typically happens or pipelines get filled after events um i would say it starts before usually my my personal best lead generation i typically get three to five leads simply from texting the invite link out <laughs> um so for me that is always where i end up getting the most things so even before the event happens um and then whether or not they're coming yes we want them to be there but at that point it's a they're going to see all the marketing we're going to have had a conversation prior to it and then they're going to see whether they came oh this is where i was at in the video or dang i missed that one i got to get to the next one um so i'll make sure my schedule is a little bit more available so um in terms of like roi well we don't spend any money on zillow so all of our money is going into these events um and into buying swag um where we're shooting those out of out of a t-shirt cannon essentially <laughs> at all of our events um so that people also have that and they're walking around with it and they're seeing our brand in front of them every single day yeah that's great that's great and and i think that um you know one of the things that danny mentioned was that when you send an invitation you're inviting somebody to something. You're not asking for anything from them. You're trying to give them something. And what mm -hmm. then naturally happens is they give back to you with yeah. referrals or, or yeah. even their own business. Right. So I was actually just having a discussion with a buddy of mine and I can't say I've read this book, but I was, he was telling me about something that he took away from this book and it's called pitch everything. And, um, he talks about, or the author of that book is talking about how Traditionally, sales has always been about how can I be as loud as possible and convince you to do something? And um, he's like, I think now we're coming into an age where it's like the one that whispers wins. And whenever you're not the one that is like trying to force them to do something or you're just providing value. And then when you're whispering, what do you, what do, you do? You lean in to listen to what's happening more versus then if you're shout, being shouted at, you're coming away. So I think a lot of the things that we're doing is just strategy around how can we create these little touch points where we aren't trying to convince somebody to buy a house. We're just showing that, hey, we're a trusted resource and we care about you. So we're gonna continue to provide value so that when it is time for you to buy a house or you are interested in it, you already trust us and know that we're fun people to be around and it's going to be a great experience if you, um, and you're gonna be um, given good advice and be connected with the right people to make it all happen and you feel great about your purchase or your sale. Awesome. So what happens after the event? What, what have you guys gotten really good at in the follow-up piece? Um, there's going to be another event. <laughs> so I think there's like the consistency of this was awesome. Also be ready for the next one. We're not going away. Um, but we, like anytime you go to book a ticket, you are booking under which is the agent that you most associate with or that invited you personally to this. So then all of those agents are getting those text and email lists to where they have those follow-ups. And again, that's a thank you for coming out. So glad we got a chat or sorry, I was with a hundred other people. Let's set up coffee, want to get together with you. So it's just making these natural invites into the next thing, whether that's uh, coffee or I uh, leveraged the golf event last year to then do a simple portrait project family photo thing for all of my personal people where I invited my uh, top 50 people from the past year of hey let's do this uh, next event to where this is not necessarily a bear group thing but I'm seeing how much business is coming from inviting you to this I'm going to start inviting people to my own micro events because it's something that I personally want to invest in um and so I, I think it just creates a natural, we don't need to schmooze you. Let's just continue to hang out and let's just continue to be friends and thank you for coming. And maybe that's um, just sending a text or an email or a phone call after the event, uh, but maybe it's setting up a coffee because you mentioned something to me at the event that perked my interest of, hey, I think this might be a warm lead here. So let's follow up on that a little bit more. That's great. Um, so we're providing 
uh, each agent with the people that they invited to that. Um, but then also, I mean, we've, we get most of our uh, inbound leads that are from people that we don't know are from the friend of a friend of a friend that we have no clue who they are, but they've been to two of our events. Um, they reach out to us and we're trying to figure out how do they know us? And I, Oh yeah, I was at Trey Kennedy and I was at the Reds game last year. Um, whenever I thought of a real estate team, you guys are the only ones that I know. So I figured I'd give you a shot. Yeah. <clears throat> yep. Okay. I'm going to ask him my last question. If you guys want to get yours ready, um, you can either unmute or, or, uh, put it in the chat, but, um, Mitch, you came in with this vision for, for Danny and, and you've blown past that mm -hmm. <laughs> you've blown past the 2.5, right? Yeah. So where, where are you headed? What's next? Um, I mean, I, I'm a big believer of just saying the things that you want and see what happens. I feel like if you actually just put it out in the stratosphere, somebody's going to hold you accountable. I just ran the half pig this past weekend and the most, um, the best training blocks that I've had for a race have been whenever I paid for the race earliest on, um, versus like doing it the week before. And like, I guess I'll do this. Um, and I, I think for us, like we want to be the top team in the city. Uh, I, don't, I think we're not, uh, ashamed of saying that. And we want to be able to scale beyond that, um, uh, to other cities eventually. So those are the things that we're saying, how that ends up playing out. I don't know. I think we still got to have a lot of key team members that come our way and things have to go right. And who knows what's going to happen with family. But um, I think we're always about continuing to love and care for the people in our city more. Um, and so for us setting that goal of this is where we want to be. And I think there's profound impact in that we believe that the home matters to the family. And we believe that at a deep level. Uh, so we want to be involved in helping make that happen. That's great. Okay. Who's got a question? Hey, this is Miranda. I'll ask a question here. Yep. So other than the client, um, appreciation events, do you guys reach out with any other touch points to the clients or is that kind of the, the bread and butter of, of the follow-up? Uh, I mean, so social media blasts um all the time we're big on instagram facebook and then we also do mailchimp blasts uh not sometimes they're usually event specific because it feels like we're always marketing event or talking about event that just happened um but we're usually doing little quick market updates or um, individual content that some of our agents may have shot that we want to spotlight uh, or listings that we have so everything that we're trying to do in terms of the events that we do is to capture email and phone data to add to our database. So I think Danny talked about us not really having a database and that social media is his database. That's not true. Uh, <laughs> we, we are using command. Uh, his operations team just runs all of that for him. <laughs> Good question. Thank you. Yep. Anyone else? All right, Mitch. I this has been awesome. It's uh, Patrick said in the chat. I don't know if you can see this, but he's got a lot of respect for you. I, I, I actually think that um, there that we will see more uh, roles in people like Mitch and real estate teams. I think it just makes too much sense for outside business people to come into real estate and and help free up agents to do what they're best at um so so mitch this has been awesome i i, I really enjoyed this i feel like i've gotten stuff i wrote down two books that you mentioned that that yeah. that i should read um I'm not going to go run the half. Sorry. I'm a big <laughs> guy. It hurts my feet to run. So, uh, but anyway, I, I've appreciated this. I thank you so much. Um, and, and I will enjoy going back and, and re-listening to this and chopping it up and sending it back to you. I appreciate it. Thanks for having me. Sorry for the technical difficulties. Uh, obviously not the client experience that we like to get, but, uh, uh, appreciate you guys bearing in with me and, Thanks for having me so much. I, I think it's just like having a two hour rain delay at the Reds event, right? <laughs> That's right. So. That's right. <laughs>
All right, guys. Thank you so much. We'll see you. Right. I'll, I'll be sending out invites for next week. Take care. Thanks.